Hello everyone. My name is Jonathan Bell and I'm the head of department of the Institute of the Americas here at UCL and a professor of US history. It's a huge pleasure to be able to welcome you to our virtual open day for our postgraduate talk programs today. I'm really proud to work at the Institute. It is the only department of its kind in the UK, exploring the whole of the Western Hemisphere from a multidisciplinary social science and historical perspective. The department has research expertise across the whole Western Hemisphere, working on countries ranging from Canada, the United States, to Guatemala, Colombia, Peru, and Brazil. We have particular strengths in research topics that cross geographical boundaries globally, but which can be illuminated with special clarity in a Western hemispheric context, speaking to current debates in new area studies around the particular insights to be gained in regional approaches to major contemporary political and economic issues. We think big in the Institute and we ask big questions, but we are a small intimate department um, in which we get to know our students well. If you come to study one of our six postgraduate taught programs, you will be part of a small but dynamic community in a large global university in one of the globe's great cities. I'm really pleased to welcome you today and I look forward to hopefully answering your questions and to seeing many of you in the department soon. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on this virtual open day. My name is Malu Gatt. I am Assistant Professor of Latin American Politics and Admissions Tutor here at the Institute of the Americas. In my role as admissions tutor, it's my privilege to welcome you to this session today, as well as to introduce my colleagues and to get started. Um, so I'll just speak for a few minutes about why I think the Institute is a, such a great place to study as well as work really. And then I'll pass it along to my colleagues who will be talking about specific de degree programs as well as to a current student and former student who'll tell you a little bit more about what it's like to be at the Institute from the student's perspective. Um, the Institute is uh, a world leading department. It's, uh, it's the largest unit for multidisciplinary study of the Americas in the UK. And it's really truly unique in this, uh, in this respect because there are no other area study centers that offer as much in terms of geographical coverage while maintaining a cohesive focus on history and the social sciences. And so by coming to the Institute, you'll be able to get really deep expertise and expand your horizons while still maintaining this, um, this focus. Um, all of your lectures are, are very, well uh, very well respected and known in their particular uh, disciplines or areas of study. Uh, they'll have spent a, a considerable amount of time and maintain close ties with uh, the Americas or even be from the Americas. Uh, the faculty at the Institute are publishing and actively contributing to not only knowledge production, but also to social political developments. And so they're publishing influential books and, and articles in top journals. They're also providing consultancies to international organizations and NGOs. Um, to government bodies or, or particular officials, as well as providing commentary and analysis to, to the media as, uh, as political processes and social processes develop uh, throughout the Americas. And so this is a place where you'll really see where academic knowledge and academic production meets practice. The Institute of the Americas is also um, a happy home. There is, uh, and, and I don't really say this lightly, London is a huge city. UCL is a very large university that provides excellent infrastructure and resources. And so while London will offer you great opportunities to develop your professional networks, uh, give you opportunities to really get to know different professional areas, um, and to uh, 
you know, experience a lot of different cultural events. Um, and UCL will give you some of the top resources and infrastructure as well as opportunities of interaction, not only within the department, but also with other departments through student clubs and UCL wide events. At the Institute, you will get a small and intimate department while you'll be known, supported and really listened to. You'll get to know all of your lectures really well. You'll get to know other students and you'll also get to shape the department. And what I mean by that is that our students are often involved in organizing events, um, either collaboratively or, you know, giving us ideas so that we can uh, start putting these things together and, and other and also other departmental activities that, that are not necessarily events. And so you'll really get this exchange, uh, I think, in a very meaningful way. And so I think that the Institute really provides the best of both worlds. Uh, in terms of it being small, uh, to the extent that you will really get to know each other and have this close interaction with each other as well as, as your lecturers, as, as I was mentioning, but you'll, you're still embedded in this big infrastructure uh, of UCL that allows you to access resources that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get uh, in other places. The Institute is also very well located in a beautiful uh, building in Gordon Square at the heart of Bloomsbury. Uh, you know, as, as the location already gives you a hint, there is a beautiful square right in front of our building where um, students and ourselves get out to, to eat and read uh, when it's nice outside. Uh, there is a, there, there tends to be a very nice, street food around the area and so you really get uh this nice place to to be hanging out in london it's it's more of a quiet uh student area but it's also very close to the british library which is a great alternative place to study and do work um when you don't want to be in the u.s library which is also uh fabulous uh, it's very close to the British Museum. And so again, you're you're quite at the cultural center of London and you can access cultural activities beyond UCL quite easily. If I may say so, I also think that the Institute of the Americas offers really fascinating modules that are designed with students in mind. And so they're research led meaning that we're all only teaching uh, areas that we research and know well. And that means that you really get um, the best, most updated information, most updated reading lists. And so you're really reading the top um, research that's being produced in, in those particular areas. Uh, very often we know the people that, um, that we're assigning. And, and we are essentially, you know, also giving you this background of the literature and how the literature evolves because we know it uh, quite well. What that means as well is that we get to oftentimes present to you research that's ongoing and tell you a little bit more about this background uh, of, of knowledge production that you wouldn't otherwise get to see if we were teaching modules that are a bit more distant to our areas of research. And so to give you an example of my own teaching, um, I teach two master level courses, uh, one on gender politics and public policy in Latin America, and another one on Brazilian politics and public policy. And both of these areas are areas that are you know, very, very closely tied to my research, uh, which is something that I've been doing for over 10 years. And so you really do and I get to build a lot um, of these uh, of these courses from my own research and keep on updating the courses as current, you know, ongoing research is coming out. And so, for instance, even when I see articles from other authors that are working papers that are under review, um, I, I get to often see them. And, and if they and it makes sense for them to to be in the course material, this is something that I would introduce to students. And so. 
you know these courses are, are kept really up to date uh, because they're they're so uh, this this research aspect of it is so important. Um, the other thing is that the course activities that that we develop tend to also think about how to connect academic learning with practice. And so uh, in Pierre uh, Engstrom's course, students have put together a publication on human rights in Colombia, and, and this was published recently and circulated amongst policymakers and academics. Students in my courses, uh, again, on the one on gender politics and public policy, they design policy campaigns. On the one in Brazilian politics and public policy, they design, uh, they write policy memos. And so here, again, thinking about how does this academic knowledge then lead you to think about um, social political processes in a way uh, that is more practical and that could potentially allow you to make these connections between what you learn in the classroom and how you would apply them in a, in a work setting beyond the academic realm. Um, finally, London also provides opportunities for engagement beyond the classroom. And so, you know, earlier on I mentioned that you're not only going to get expertise from faculty at the Institute, um, you're also going to get expertise from each other. We have students coming from all over the world who have uh, extensive work experiences, life experiences that bring a lot of contributions to class debates. And so you're going to be learning from each other a lot. Another benefit of being such a small department is that a lot of our classes are actually structured in a seminar style, meaning that you really get to learn from each other, see how um, your colleagues have read uh, the assigned literature, how is it that they can think or apply that to their own work experiences or previous knowledge of other areas. And so you'll really get to learn from each other. The expertise will come from the student body. But not only that, the expertise will also come from external speakers. Almost every day of the week, we'll have events in the department. So you're going to be hearing from other academics, from other institutions. You'll be hearing from practitioners who are passing through London. And this is one of the reasons why I mentioned that um, London provides opportunities for engagement beyond the classroom, because we do have this benefit of being located in London and being able to invite people who are coming through London. We London also provides us the opportunity of attending events at other institutes, universities, or even um, going to government buildings or um, or, or events that may be uh, hosted by think tanks, etc., that speak quite well to what we're doing in the classroom. So just to give you an idea, this year I took my students from, um, from the Brazil course to a visit to the Brazil embassy. And so three diplomats received us and gave us, uh, you know, some time to just ask questions. And so they presented a little bit about what Brazilian Foreign Service does. And that also gave the opportunity for students to ask questions about, about the Brazilian uh, Foreign Service, how international policy is made. Um, and so again, right, uh, thinking about how London provides us the opportunity of building knowledge that is connected to what you learn in the classroom, but that really goes beyond the classroom. Finally, I think that um, for all of our degrees, really, given the, their focus, um, they would provide you the opportunity of either really enhance the prospects of the career path that you're already pursuing, or to allow you to change career paths. And so uh, just to give you an idea of the types of careers that our former students have undertaken, uh, some of them have gone into professional recruitment schemes in banking, management, consultancy, think tanks, uh, or other uh, areas. We have also had students who have engaged uh, in the, who have been now taken jobs in the civil and diplomatic service, either in the UK or in the Americas. We also have students who come to the Institute to do a master's uh, 
while they're already pursuing these careers as civil uh, in the civil service or in the diplomatic service. Um, some of our past students have also or currently work or, or have previously worked at NGOs and charities, um, also in the cultural sector, as in journalism, media, museums, uh, etc. In, in fact, we'll have one of our students today, um, our former student, who is uh, in journalism, and so she'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, some of our students have also gone into teaching and education or further study, either to go into a, a different master's program or uh, particularly and, and most often into PhD programs, either in the UK or elsewhere. Um, so with that, I'm not going to keep on extending myself. I, uh, I'm sure that you are uh, looking forward to hearing from my colleagues and learning more about the degree programs that we offer. And so with that, I will pass it along to them. So first, you're gonna be hearing from um, Dr. Per Engstrom. And Per is going to be telling you a little bit more about the international relations of the America's MSc program. Then uh, Dr. Nadia Hilliard is going to tell you about the United States Studies, uh, History and Politics MA. She'll be followed by Dr. Nestor Castaneda, who's going to be speaking about the Globalization and Latin American Development, MSc. Professor Kevin Middlebrook will then talk about two master degrees, the Latin American Studies, MA, and the Latin American Politics, MSc. Then I'll come back to tell you a little bit more about the Caribbean and Latin American Studies, MA. And you'll then hear from um, two students, a former student and a current student who will give you a sense of uh, life at UCL from the other perspective, the student's perspective. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the session or, or after, please get in touch and, and let us know. We'll be happy to answer them um, and you'll stay in touch. Uh, you can also follow us on social media on our Twitter, Instagram or Facebook accounts where we try to keep you up to date of the activities in the department and what's going on. And so um, that's another way of, of keeping in touch with us. So please follow us there. Um, with that said, I'll pass it along to, to Pear. I am Pear Engstrom and I'm an associate professor at the Institute of the Americas at UCL and the program director of our MSc in International Relations of the Americas. I am trained as an international relations scholar and my research focuses on the role of international institutions and international law in global governance with particular reference to human rights. My research draws from multiple academic disciplines including political science, law, sociology and history. And it is this commitment to interdisciplinarity that has shaped the design and the teaching of the MSc in international relations at the Institute. The master's program is an exciting program to teach and I hope also to study. The program as a whole provides a detailed and systematic understanding of the international relations of the Americas with regard to inter-American relations, that is relations between countries and societies in the Americas, as well as relations with the world beyond. The program attracts students from a variety of backgrounds, both in terms of previous studies and in terms of geographical origins. We don't expect any prior study of international relations. Rather, I believe the program and our institute as a whole thrive on a diversity of student backgrounds and experiences. The program draws students from across the Americas, both North and South, as well as from Europe, including the UK, of course, and Asia. The program's graduates have established careers in research, journalism, business, teaching, and policy formulation, implementation, and government, diplomatic services, and NGOs. The program is unique in the UK in that it adopts a truly hemispheric perspective on the Americas. It is not about the United States exclusively, nor is it about Latin America as an isolated region in the world. The program is about thinking critically about the Americas, both as a region in itself and in its relations with the world beyond the region. As such, the program introduces students to skills essential for their analytical study of the international relations of the Americas. It offers students the opportunity to develop the ability to understand and critically assess 
the hemispherical and global issues currently facing societies and policy policymakers in the Americas. The Institute of the Americas is also unique in the academic study of the Americas in the UK. The Institute promotes, coordinates and provides a focus for research and postgraduate teaching on the Americas, and that includes the Canada, the Caribbean, Latin America and the United States. For students of international relations in the Americas, this offers an ex excellent opportunities both to learn from world leading scholars and to do networking. The Institute has extended, extensive ties with cultural, diplomatic and business organizations based in London with interest in the Americas. It also maintains widespread networks with North American, Latin American, Caribbean scholars and policymakers across the region. The program has three modules that all students on the program take. First, the module on the international politics of Latin America, which offers an introduction to the discipline of international relations with a focus naturally on the region of Latin America. The substantive uh, second core module uh, of the program examines US foreign policy in the period since the end of the Cold War. And the third core module is a methodology module that prepares students for the program's uh, research dissertation. All students undertake an independent research project which culminates in a dissertation of 15,000 words. Many of our master's students undertake field work in order to carry out research for the dissertation projects. And in most years, the Institute has limited funds available to students to help towards the cost of field work. These funds are awarded on a competitive basis on the criteria of academic performance today, the quality of the research, research proposal and the importance of fieldwork for completing the research. So in short, I hope that I've given you at least a taste of what I believe is an exciting program for anyone interested in the international relations of the Americas. I look forward to meeting all our successful uh, applicants motivated and ready to learn at the start of the next academic year. Hi, thanks so much for joining us today. I hope we can answer some of your questions about the MA programs here at the Institute of the Americas. I'm Nadia Hilliard, lecturer in US politics, and I focus on contemporary political institutions and accountability in the United States. I want to give you a brief overview of the MA in US studies here at the Institute. So why come to the Institute of the Americas to study the history and the politics of the United States? Well, the Institute is in the heart of Bloomsbury, just around the corner from the British Library. You have access to all of the advantages of, of London, including the Eccles Centre for American Studies at the British Library, uh, and the advantages of a large world-class university. At UCL, you have access to an unparalleled range of library resources. The UCL Library, the Senate House Library, uh, the Institute for Historical Research, all within a short walking distance of the Institute. There's also everything that UCL has to offer. You can take advantage of the academic and social resources of the entire university, including the many lectures and seminars that take place uh, and the new student center across the square. Finally, this is a small department. We're a supportive, close-knit community, and you'll get to know your lecturers and fellow graduate students very quickly. So what does the degree program look like? Well, first, it's multidisciplinary. This means that you'll study the social and political history of the U.S., but you'll also be exposed to perspectives from anthropology, art through vis visual representations, and social and political theory. Over the course of the program, you'll take a total of six modules, plus write a dissertation. One of those modules, Researching the Americas, is a core compulsory class for all students and covers the fundamentals of researching at the postgraduate level. We'll give you an overview of many different research methods, both qualitative and quantitative, and then give you the opportunity to specialize in a few of those methods, depending on your interests. For your five substantive options, which are spread between the first and second terms, you can choose from a range of modules that span political science, international relations, and social and political history. They cover a variety of topics from race, class, gender, and sexuality to foreign policy and domestic political institutions and social movements. Within the Institute, each year we offer a range of options that can include American political development, confronting the Colossus, which is a module on US anti-imperialism from the Second World War to the present, from Skid Row to Obamacare, which covers the politics of social welfare since 1900, 
From the New South to the Modern South, which is a history of the South as a region. The Politics of U.S. Foreign Policy, Post-Cold War U.S. Foreign Policy, Presidents and the Presidency, Challenging the Straits, the Straits, the straight State, a uh, History of Sexual Politics, uh, and States of Exception, which covers the ways that the U.S. state has built capacity by systematically excluding certain populations geographically. If it's relevant to your research, you can explore the Institute modules that cover Latin America or Caribbean politics and society, or even take a module outside of the, the department. Finally, there's your dissertation. You'll write this in your third term and over the summer, and you'll receive close supervision from one of the staff members of the department. Students write on a wide range of topics. Recently, we've had students work on Black Lives Matter, voter turnout, recent ID laws, voter ID laws, uh, impeachment as a form of accountability, the gun control debate, women during the AIDS crisis of the 1980s, the 1912 presidential election, and so forth. During the intellectual formation you'll re receive over the course of the year, you're going to develop some key skills. So first, you'll acquire detailed historical and cultural knowledge about the United States. But more fundamentally, you're going to develop your ability to read, write, and analyze on the postgraduate level, and you'll learn how to do independent research. What does that mean? It means narrowing a topic from a broad interest to a very specific question that you can use to make a distinctive original contribution. It means finding your own sources and learning to judge the quality of those sources. It means navigating the process of asking for ethical permission to do social scientific research. And finally, it means being aware of the methodological choices you make in your research and how those choices dictate the kinds of analysis and arguments you can make. In short, it means deepening the skills and knowledge you acquired as an undergraduate and applying them to your own topic on a much deeper and more sophisticated level. After your degree, you'll have the competence and experience to pursue further academic teaching, public service of all kinds, including government work, NGOs, think tanks, both here and in North America, in Europe, uh, and journalism. Previous students have gone on to complete PhDs, to work for political campaigns, and to work for a variety of political organizations. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to email me or anyone else on the team. Um, thanks again for joining us, and we very much hope to welcome you to the Institute uh, next year or in future years. Hello, everybody. My name is Nestor Castaneda. I'm an associate professor at the Institute of the Americas, and I'm also the director of our Globalization and Latin American Development Master Program. Uh, this master program is most focused on the study of the economic development in Latin America. We basically try to study different theories of economic development and economic growth and globalization, and how those theories are useful to us uh, for, or for our, our understanding of the main characteristics of economic development in Latin America. We also discuss most of the current problems in economic development in the region, and possible alternatives, possible policy alternatives to these problems. Uh, we also pay special attention to the relationship between political institutions and economic performance and the impact of economic policies on inequality and redistribution. Finally, uh, the program is also designed to develop uh, some very specific research and professional skills among our students. Uh, we have two core modules and several optional modules. The core modules are the first, globalization and Latin American development, in which basically uh, uh, we, in, in, we discuss uh, uh, different theories of economic development uh, and different applications of those theories for the case of Latin America. And the second core mode is research in the Americas, which is uh, designed to develop uh, some basic research skills among our, stu our students. Uh, we also have a, a, um, a variety of optional modes that you can take. For example, Latin American economics, Latin American political economy, 
uh, international politics of Latin America, sustainable development, challenges to develop development in Brazil, gender and public policy in Latin America, among other things. I, I would like to highlight the fact that most of this teaching is research oriented. So you're going to be taking uh, your classes with experts on different, uh, uh, on a specific um, fields and issues in Latin American economic uh, development. For example, you're going to have, uh, you're going to take classes on tax and business politics with experts on the topic, uh, classes on democratization, welfare state or social protection policies with uh, specific uh, experts on the issue, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the structure of the program is, is really straightforward. If you're a full-time student, you're going to have, you're going to be with us for a year along um, in term one and two. You're going to take your core modules and a wide choice and optional modules, including modules that we offer in house at the institute or, uh, or, or uh, other modules offered by uh, different departments at UCL. Um, uh, in term one and two, like a, like a, like a, like a typical week in terms one and, and two, uh, you're going to have in a typical week, you're going to have four to six hours of lectures and seminars, and then something like 26 to 40 hours of independent study at home or in the library, uh, whenever you feel more comfortable to, to study. Then in term three, you're going to write a dissertation, and also you're going to have the opportunity to, to as, a, as a part of, the, of writing the dissertation, you're going to have the opportunity to undertake fieldwork if that's what you want to do. Uh, uh, all uh, the the teaching and the research based teaching in in in, in, uh, in the, at the institute is also uh, supported by a series of, of uh, uh, events and seminar series that we run basically every day at the institute in which you can you can attend lectures and we or we bring guest speakers from different institutions in the UK and the US or Latin America, and they, they discuss and present their research on different topics like Latin American political economy, Latin American studies, Canadian studies, Caribbean studies, uh, US studies, etc. etc. To be honest, it's one of the, the, the most useful resources that you have when you're in, uh, at the Institute uh, to have this, all these people visiting basically every night. I guess uh, I, I just want to, to, to finish with a very quick note on careers development. Uh, just to say that our graduates uh, usually find jobs in different sectors, such as the UK government, international organizations, business consulting, journalism, finance, banking, international NGOs. And we have an, a good number of, of uh, former students that are currently um, uh, undertaking doctoral studies in prestigious universities in the UK and the US. So uh, please feel free to contact me if you have any other questions. Uh, I'm more than happy to do it via email or Skype if you want to have a chat about all these issues. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Middlebrook. I'm professor of Latin American politics at the Institute for the Americas. Thank you very, very much for your interest in the Institute and its Latin American programs. Let me tell you a little bit about myself and then a little bit about the programs I coordinate. I am a political scientist by training. I study democratization and U.S. Latin American relations. I'm working on a book on the international defense of labor rights in the North American context. Uh, at the Institute, I coordinate the uh, MSC program in Latin American politics and the MS in the MA program in Latin American studies. And I regularly teach each autumn of uh, the module democratization in Latin America. One of the things that often confuses people is the difference between an MA and an MC program. Uh, basically, the only real difference is that the MSC has a requirement uh, in terms of its substantive focus. 
So for example, uh, the Latin American Studies Master's program is quite flexible. The only requirement that you really have is methods course, the methods module, research in the Americas. Whereas the MSC in Latin American politics has, in addition to the methods course, a, a core requirement, which is the module I teach on democratization in Latin America. So if you're debating which to enroll as, it really is up to you. Uh, the MA gives you maximum flexibility because out of six required modules over the course of the year, you have only one requirement, research in the Americas, whereas in the MSC, you would have two, research in the Americas and democratization in Latin America. It really comes down to whether you want that extra module flexibility or whether you would like on your record reference to Latin American politics per se. Uh, you can make the choice now, but if you decide a couple of weeks into the autumn term that you would like to change either from the Latin American studies to Latin American politics, or vice versa, you can certainly do that. UCL does allow that. And it's important to make the choice relatively early, but even there you have some degree of flexibility. Uh, both of these degrees seek to give you a very broad overview of contemporary Latin America, uh, but also real country understanding and substantive depth particular uh, issues. So for example, in the course democratization in Latin America, uh, we look at the long-term span of the recent democracy experience in Latin America, from 1980s to 2020. We look at particular substantive issues, role of political parties in elections, international influences on democratization. And so at the end of the term, you should have a pretty broad understanding of contemporary Latin American politics, but with a focus on the issue of democracy, democratization, and especially in, in these days, the great challenges to democracy in a number of Latin American countries. As I'm sure all of my colleagues would, uh, in their own respective spheres, I'd be delighted to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Hi again. Uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the um, Caribbean and Latin American Studies MA, which is the final degree program that we offer here at the Institute. So as, as um, the other programs that you've heard about, there are two main core courses of this degree, and these are compulsory modules. The first one is the Caribbean from the Haitian Revolution to the Cuban Revolution. This is a course taught by uh, Dr. Kate Quinn, who's also the program director for this, um, for this degree. And she's been working on Anglophone Caribbean political history uh, for a long time and has an extensive list of incredible uh, works in this area. The second uh, compulsory module for this course is uh, similarly to the other degrees, the Research in the Americas module. And this is the module that will um, teach you about research methods and provide you with a structure to come up with a dissertation project. So over the summer, you'll be conducting your dissertation uh, you'll be assigned an advisor based on your um, either methods or uh, most often topic of interest. Uh, and so you'll be assigned to one of us and then uh, we'll supervise you to successfully writing a dissertation until the end of summer. Uh, in this degree, you also have a list of optional modules within the department that you can choose from. Uh, and these include uh, some of the modules that my colleagues have already talked about, uh, for instance, Politics, Society, and Development in the Modern Caribbean, which is also a course taught by Dr. Kate Quinn, uh, a course like Democratization in Latin America, Histories of Exclusion, Race, Race and Ethnicity in Latin America, Money and Politics in Latin America, etc. Uh, you can also select courses outside of the Institute of the Americas, for instance, in the history department or in the politics department, anthropology, whatever, uh, any other department 
that ha offers a course that would nicely complement your study uh, in this MSc. The idea here is that uh, you know you would maintain the the course uh, content cohesive throughout your course selections, but that you would still be able to uh, pick and choose from a selection of courses that's not only offered within the department but also externally to the department as well. Uh, one of the exciting things I think about conducting this particular degree is that it is regarding London's um, is regarding London's and what London has to offer when it comes to Caribbean culture, uh, intellectual production, uh, history. And so you're really embedded into this environment where you can gain a lot from being in London. And we also take advantage of that. And so uh, Kate actually organizes and hosts this fabulous uh, series on the Caribbean. Uh, inviting very uh, you know, renowned speakers on the Caribbean and she really has managed to bring together a community of scholars that are often and recurrently coming to the Institute to attend these talks and the this community is built around the seminar series as well and so that means that you would get to meet people who are uh, not current students of the department and who are not uh, staff of the department, but who are still constantly visiting the department to take part in the seminary series. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, you know, this is, is also a program where you see the link between research and practice quite uh, strongly. And so, for instance, Kate herself has served as, as chair of the Haiti Support Group, which is a UK-based advocacy organization. Uh, she's still in the executive committee of this organization. Emily Morris, who is a research fellow here at the Institute, is now leading uh, the UCL Cuba Collaboration Project and often provides analysis and commentary to the media on um, on Cuban politics and, and uh, social economic developments. And so this is a very lively community to be learning about the Caribbean. And so this is a really great program um, to choose from as well. So with that, I will now pass it along to uh, our students, uh, Noah Eckstein and uh, Constance Mallory. We're going to be talking about, Noah will be talking about the current uh, student experience and Constant will, Constance will be talking about how it was to uh, study here at the Institute a few years ago. So thanks a lot uh, and I hope you enjoy, uh, you've enjoyed hearing from, from our faculty and you enjoy hearing from our students next. Hello everyone, my name is Noah Eckstein. I am an MA student at UCL studying US history and politics at the Institute of the Americas. And I am wearing a Jeremy Bentham shirt. He was UCL's spiritual founder, very prominent philosopher in the early 1800s. Um, so yeah, I'm here to talk to you about my experience as a student at UCL and uh, kind of about the Institute of Americas, some of the classes and life in London in general. Um, I did my undergrad at City University of London in journalism and I took a year off and I made a documentary in the United States about mental health um, and kind of how that in mental health is uh, dealt with in indigenous communities and then I this year I'm doing my master's still not done with it yet so it's not in the past I'm currently writing my dissertation. Um, so yeah just immediately off the bat, UCL as, an, as a larger institution outside of the institute itself is such an amazing place. I mean, I, the Gordon Square is amazing. I love walking around UCL and there are so many opportunities for you as a student that you have at UCL, not only involving the societies, there's hundreds of societies that are professional and wonderfully organized and amazing that you can network with and make great friends. Um, but UCL has all these kind of different things that, that, that they can help you with. For example, UCL's career service is just fantastic. I, at first, I didn't think I was gonna use it for some reason, but then I've been in contact with a career person there who 
checks my CV, checks my LinkedIn, tells me about my posts on Facebook, if they're professional or not, like just above and beyond to help me get a job eventually after this. Um, yeah, and I, I think uh, one thing that I was looking for with my master's was um, an intellectual community, which is something um, Jonathan, uh, our, our institute head, talks about a lot, kind of having this in, in, uh, intellectual community. And I think definitely the Institute has that, but also UCL has that. There's this intellectual vibe, everybody's studying and everybody's really passionate about, about what they're doing at UCL. Um, inside the Institute, I took a lot of different courses. Um, I was on, on taking history classes about the United States, but also more specifically pre-Cold War and post-Cold War foreign policy classes, a class on the presidents, a class on states of exception that look at marginalized communities in the United States and how the government uh, kind of changes policies during, during states of emergency, like now, um, that affect marginalized communities. Um, at the Institute, if you're on the, the course that I was on, you're also able to take um, a certain amount of credits of outside modules, which I did a philosophy class, which was very interesting for the time that I was in the class. But then when I came to write the essay, it was really hard because I don't have a background in philosophy. That being said, I also took a documentary, an ethnographic documentary, a practical documentary course um, in the anthropology department. And that was an amazing class. It taught me actual skills on how to make a documentary, how to work with a camera, what a camera is, you know. Um, shutter speed and that kind of stuff. And then also theory behind documentary. Uh, it was a class that was every Friday from nine to five. And we would start by watching a documentary. It was an amazing class. Um, to be honest, I've loved every class I've taken at UCL. I've loved every professor. And uh, a lot of my friends who went to school in the United States are like, that's not, that's not my experience. And at UCL, at, the professors treat you like a researcher, which you are, and you're treated with respect in a community, and everybody's interested to hear what you have to say if you've done the readings, which is so important. These classes, they may only happen once a week, but you're going to have 100, 150, 200, 200 pages of, of reading per class, which takes a long time. And yes, you will skim sometimes. You have to skim. Sorry, professors. But it is so important to be doing those readings because that's why you're here. You're, the, you're, you're at UCL to be exposed to literature and reading and, and, and material that you wouldn't be if you were trying to learn on your own. And you have to make the decision kind of at the beginning. Do you, Am I going to completely focus on this or am I going to try and time manage? Because when you get to UCL, especially when there's a freshers fair, um, you're you're bombarded with with different clubs and activities and societies and sports that are all filled with amazing people who want you to join and you want to join and sometimes you will join it but you have to really realize kind of what you can do and you can't stretch yourself too thin um, that's probably one of the worst things that you can do you have to be um, very selective and in, in the groups that you choose and and you have to know what kind of life you want like if you want to be partying or socializing more, then you have to realize that maybe you can't be in as many societies and you have to juggle that with school. Or if you want to just focus on school, pick one society like the knitting club. That's, you know, kind of just takes your mind off things. Um, I am a journalist and I, my mission is journalism. So I was involved. Um, I had a radio show through UCL's radio, um, radio department, uh, Rare FM. Uh, I wrote columns for UCL's different magazines, Kinesis, which is a science magazine, and uh, UCL's Pi magazine, which is the main UCL magazine. I was also um, an editor for the ID for the application of psychedelics, so I kind of um, checked all their grammar and, and checked all their output when they were sending things. Um, so there are amazing clubs that hold amazing events and they get amazing speakers to come. I'm uh, astounded by UCL's Film Society. The Film Society is is incredible. Christopher Nolan kind of started it back in the 90s and um, it's they have money to, they're making film time, they're hiring different people to do things, they're bringing in people to teach you about sound and lighting, 
and they have cameras for you to rent out and they have a podcast and they have a website with a magazine and everybody's passionate and it's great. So um, yeah, a little bit more about the Institute. Um, I had a great tutor. I had a great dis dissertation supervisor, kind of everybody. They're also great. Um, there's great panel discussions that the Institute holds about um, American studies, about things relating to American politics and history. And yeah, every time I walked inside the doors at the Institute right on Gordon Square, it just felt like I was part of a group of people that are interested in America. And, you know, especially with Trump being in the White House, with um, the state of politics in the United States, a lot of times I'm very passionate about that stuff. And I'll, I'll talk to friends outside of the Institute and it's like, OK, enough already. But if you have an interest, in, a deep interest in politics and history and you go to the Institute and people are hanging out, like you talk to them about that, they'll want to talk to you about that for as, as long as possible, really. Um, and you're in London, you know, London's a great city. I don't know if some of you are from London or have been to London before. London's a, it's an awesome city. I lived there for four years, would love to go back, you know, looks like I'm quarantining in this house for as long as possible. Um, but yeah, I love London. The opportunity, there are a lot of opportunities at, at London. Uh, yeah, great place. And um, UCL has different fairs that will help you potentially get jobs or part-time work. They have a really good database of, of internships and, and different freelancing gigs that you could uh, be doing that are outside of UCL. Um, quick note on some library, some tips on the library. The new student center, it's beautiful. Me, I'm not about the student center. Too many people, and especially when you eventually, hopefully, go to UCL. Um, well, hopefully everybody will be there just with masks, you know, in this new world that we live in. But my favorite library, hint, hint, the archaeology library, it is beautiful. There's not a lot of spaces, but if you get there right at 9 a.m. in the morning, you can have the greatest space. I'll explain it to you. You walk down a corridor of books, and then at the end of the corridor is a desk that looks outside, potted plants overflowing everywhere with a, a, a bust of some famous archaeologist and a wonderful workspace just for one person. I don't think there is a better study spot. There's a few of those um, in the archaeology library, but there's no better study spot than that in London. Um, so uh, one of the last questions that Malu kind of asked me to, to talk about is if um, I think that the Institute helps will help me get a job or to what effect does um, does my time at the Institute make me more prepared for my plans after after this degree so right now I'm very much focusing on finishing two essays a documentary for this documentary class and a dis and my dissertation by September but also applying to jobs which are mainly um, in the podcasting radio side of things or I'm also applying to broadcast producing journalism jobs and written journalism jobs. Um, I think that the Institute has made me more prepared to be confident in my ability to talk about history, um, to talk about things that happened in the past with just greater knowledge. So for that, I'm forever grateful for my time at UCL because I think Bensley uh, important, uh, mainly for myself, like just my own knowledge, but naturally that'll help me in a job if I'm being asked about something and have historical context to give it. Um, but the way that I think about it is like, no, I, I did this for myself. i getting a master's for myself. Um, and then if it helps me with a job, you know, like that's great. But um, I, I think that getting a master's is the knowledge that you learn for, for you. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure it'll help me get a job and show that I'm more qualified, which is important. Um, but yeah, um, please, if you, I know this is a different way to do an open day, but um, if any of you have questions, Malu can provide you with my email and phone number and we can chat about UCL further. So it was nice to e-meet you or virtually see you, even though I'm not seeing you. Um, best of luck and please be safe. Hi, um, I'm Constance. And I did the Globalization and Latin American Development Masters three years ago 
in 2016-2017 and I'm now a writer and editor at Latin News, a publication that produces uh, analysis on politics, economics and security issues in Latin America, uh, where I write mainly about Brazil. Um, why did I decide to do the Masters at the Institute of the Americas? Um, well, I knew I wanted to do postgraduate study in Latin American studies. I was quite keen on the idea of doing that in London, um, and there were certain aspects of the Institute's degrees which stood out for me. Um, the modules and stuff looked interesting. I quite liked the fact that it was a 12 months degree rather than a nine months one, as some universities offer. Um, and definitely while doing it, I really appreciated having those uh, three, four months at the end of the academic year to focus exclusively on meditation as sort of a separate part from the two semesters of teaching. Um, and another thing that drew me to the Institute's Masters was the fact that field work in the region is offered as an option, uh, in part because we have those that longer period to work on meditation. Um, it's obviously not a given, it depends on the subject of the station, on the available funding, um, but I was one of the lucky ones and I got to go to Sao Paulo in Brazil for four weeks in the June of my Masters, um, where I basically did lots of interviews which ended up um, forming quite a large part of the research I used for meditation. Um, that field work, that month doing field work was probably my favourite part of the masters. It was uh, it was quite a challenge. I had to learn Portuguese to go and do it. Um, and I'd never done that kind of um, participant-based research before, but it was unbelievably interesting. Um, I absolutely loved the whole experience and in hindsight it's been useful for uh, my career and my current work, although I obviously didn't know that at the time. Um, but yeah, probably one of my favourite aspects of the masters, although I did enjoy all the London-based work as well. Um, I think something which the Institute really tries to highlight is the multidisciplinary aspect of the Masters on offer. Um, and it's true there's such a wide array of modules to choose from covering all kinds of subjects from the humanities and social sciences. Um, I, for example, I got to do a module on transitional justice, uh, so looking at how different countries in the region dealt with the legacy of dictatorships. Um, I got to learn about a bit about uh, the of international relations and um, development theory and then probably my two favorite modules which ended up being quite significant in terms of my dissertation as well a uh, module on cities so kind of in the urban anthropology subject and then one on sustainable development um, my dissertation was on uh, environmental citizenship in urban Brazil so do the two subjects kind of those two models kind of um, met in my dissertation Topic. Um, I remember being a bit nervous before starting the Masters uh, because I was coming from an arts background. Um, I did languages for my undergrad. I'd be at a disadvantage, uh, especially doing the MSc. Um, but the fact is that a lot of people in the Masters were in a similar position to me and it's taught in a way which um, you're very much taught concepts from the beginning. and. Yes, it was a lot of work, but it was also incredibly interesting. Um, and how has the Masters helped me uh, in my career and my current job? So I actually had an internship with Latin News while I was doing the Masters. Um, so for the last five months, I was uh, writing one day a week for them as an intern. And then I kept doing the freelance work for them after that, uh, in my first job. And just under two years ago, um, they got back in touch with me and saying they had a position open up uh, so I wanted to focus on Brazil. Um, and they knew that I'd worked mainly on Brazil throughout the year of my master's, um, and so that definitely put me at an advantage for this job. Uh, and I had never, I'd never focused on Brazil before the master's, so I didn't even speak Portuguese. Uh, so there's no doubt that without Without the masters, I wouldn't have been um, in a position to to even apply, let alone do my current job. Well, that's it from us today. Thank you so much for joining our virtual open day. We hope to see you very soon and meet you all. In the meantime, if you have any questions, do let us know. Thanks again.
Bye.